Alright, we have our brand new cutting edge American Standard Air Handler here. All plastic construction. Up there, believe it or not, is the heater. You see how intricate it's become. Relays for the heater. This is 5KW, that's why there's only one relay. You have to take this cap off and solder it. And you see where it's at? It is mixed in there pretty nicely. But I got the nitrogen hooked up here to blow through the coil while I'm taking that cap off so I can set up those initial connections. Why did everybody get to look at this new air handler? All plastic construction insulation inside the plastic. All aluminum coil. Electronic expansion valve. We'll look at that in a few minutes. But that's it. I'm going to get brazen. Alright, I finished brazing. I'm adding nitrogen to the system to pressure check it. I have the I cut some holes in there so I could exhaust air when I was flowing nitrogen. So I got the crimp off tool on it just to make sure it's shut. Uh, 150 pounds of nitrogen was suggested by a manufacturer, so that's what we're going to use. Uh, usually I actually use more, but for this case we're just going to use this. I had suspicion I had a leak. I was going to have a leak because I had difficult to reach area, but so far so good. Here's the American Standard Air Handler again. Little grommets there to keep from any air leaking. And it looks really nice on the outside. Uh, this one has screws. The other one had little quarter turn releases for the door, and it was kind of a pain in the butt. But these are a little bit better, just regular screws. And it's the same model, made around the same time, so I don't know why there's two different methods for opening the door. I guess they realized something was wrong. Uh, that's the EV electronic expansion valve. Something like your mini splits would have, a little bit more accurate than a mechanical TXV. Sensors here and one you can't see. Help regulate temperature and superheat. There's a little drain tap over here. Pull it out. Here's the main board. Let me get the light around here so you can see it. I don't know if I'll be able to see it or not. Yeah. As you see, it's very large. Won't focus. There it is. It low voltage connections over here, this area. And then it controls the EV and airflow and things like that. Like you'd set up a variable speed air handler. Just a little bit more to it than this one. There's our drain. It was a little bit too close for the door, so I had to cut it off and I have to reattach it once I get some more couplings. That's where we're at. Uh, just a little view of this kind of new age air handler here. Here's the air handler with all the doors on it. It's a good looking air handler. Like I said, composite body. I have a secondary switch here in case the coil pan. It's about to overflow. Primary drain. It is a blow-through coil, meaning the blower's here, blowing upward, which not, does not technically need a trap, but I like to trap it anyway, because if you're going to use something 15C or higher, why would you want to blow air out the drain all the time? There's the refrigerant line connections. They have to be out of the way of the heater, so you can pull it out if you need to. And you have to be able to take this door off. And the drain has to be far enough back so you can take the coil door off. And that's where you access the EEV and uh, the sensors and things like that. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is wire it up, low voltage wise. So I'm going to go through the manual and make sure I got everything straightened up. Then I'm going to do that. Everything hard ducted here uh, to increase performance. A little bit of flex on the return, kind of dampens the sound and it uh, so you don't have to have so many fittings here at the end of the duct. But uh, it's better off anyway not transmitting all that sound. Let's look at the drains supported by blocks all the way out. And there she is. I'm going to go ahead and wire her up.